Okay, so this video is meant to go over the concept of electric field. And remember that the electrostatic force is a field force. So the two charges are interacting because they have electric fields that are interacting. They don't have to actually physically touch each other in order for the force to be exerted. So electric field is the fact that the electrostatic force is due to a charged object being in another charged object's electric field. And one of the ways in which we can kind of understand the nature of electric fields is to do a physical model with what are called electric field lines. So electric field lines help us to visualize how a positively charged object would interact with another charged object. And so this is a physical model. That shows, and this is just a definition. Arbitrarily, they picked, we want to show how a positive charge would move, okay? It's so a physical model that shows how a positively charged object would move if placed in an external electric field. So because of this definition, that it shows how a positively charged object would move, that determines how electric field lines are drawn. So electric field lines are drawn such that they go away from positive charges and towards negative charges. Okay? Electric field lines are drawn. Such that they move away from positive charges and towards negative charges. So if I had a positive charge, the electric field lines would be going away from it. The arrows would physically have their tips going away. And then if I have a negative charge, the arrow tips would be going towards it. So that's one aspect of the physical model that can help us identify if it's a positive or negative charge. The other thing that can help us is the density of field lines. So the higher the density of electric field lines indicates the stronger electric field at a given point. So for example, if I had these two charges, charge A and charge B, and these were the mathematical, or not mathematical, these are the physical field lines that were drawn, um, you can see that the arrows are going away. So they both have the positive charges because their field lines are going away from them. But charge B has way more field lines. And so that means that charge B has a greater magnitude of charge than charge A. Okay. And field, electric fields can definitely interact with each other. Electric fields are a vector quantity, so they can add to become stronger, they can subtract to become weaker, um, and I will show you through a simulation um, some examples of that. But let's look at the mathematical model for electric fields. Um, the equation for electric fields, it's symbolized with a capital E, makes it easy. So the symbol for an electric field is capital E. Um, the equation for electric field is E is equal to K Q over R squared. So let's go over what these quantities are. Q is just the charge of the object. We know that um, from just our initial studies of electrostatics. R is the distance from the charged object. So this is like if I had, um, my marker go, if I had 
this charged object, and I want to know at this point in space, what is the electric field right there? I would need to know what the Q value is and what the R value is, what the distance is. And then the last thing in the equation is this K. And that K is something called my eraser. Oh, here it is. That K is called Coulomb's constant. And it's actually an equ uh, a constant that's made up of another variable, which is kind of like, huh, why do you do that, physics? Um, it's 4 pi epsilon, where epsilon is an um, uh, electrical measurement of the space in between. So like physically, like what is the space or in the space that's surrounding charge B? Is it air? Is it a vacuum? Is it some type of a material that is like a conductor? Is it some type of material that's an uh, insulator? What is that material? So that's what that epsilon value is. For our purposes, we are gonna primarily look at that epsilon value being something called epsilon naught, which is the permittivity of free space. So the problems that we're gonna encounter are just saying, nah, there's just air, it's a vacuum. Like there's nothing that's really hindering the electrostatic force in between them. And when it's epsilon naught, this K value is just nine times 10 to the nine. It's got some funny units. It's Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Um, but that's just the value that we will use for our level of understanding for physics, okay? Um, so that's the equation. So the symbol is E, the equation is E equals KQ over R squared. And the units for electric field are Newtons per Coulomb. And it's kind of looking at how many Newtons would be affecting a particular charge value. Okay, so that is kind of an intro to the concept of electric field. Okay, so this simulation is a pretty good model of electric fields, and it shows you the strength of the electric field with these arrows, like the direction and the strength. Um, and one way they indicate the strength is by like the color of the arrow. So the brighter the white is, the stronger the electric field is. And then the other thing you can do to, to measure it is just put this electric field sensor in different spots and it tells you the actual numeric value. Um, so I've got in this initial setup, I have these two positive charges and you can see like this one on the left, it's got this electric field going to the left and the one here on the right, or sorry, the one on the left here has its electric field going to the right, um, like kind of horizontally here. And the one on the left has, or the one on the right has it's going to the left. Hi, I'm mixing up my house right. And right here, it's really dark. And the reason is because the electric fields from the two charges are canceling out. So I can actually find that point like right there in the middle. Can I find it? Oh, it's right around here. I, they, oh, there it is. So right there, the electric fields are canceling each other out. Now, if I were to move this one closer, then that value changes because this one is closer to that point, so its R value is smaller compared to this one. So the electric fields are no longer canceling out. <clears throat> so it's kind of interesting. You can see um, playing around how the electric field changes as the charges are interacting with each other. Um, now for two opposite charges, remember um, negative charges have their field lines going towards them. So you can see for this blue one, all the field lines are going towards them. And for the red one, it's going away. So if I were to put my um, sensor in between, I would have a net electric field because they're adding up. Like they're going to the right from the positive charge, and they're going to the right from the negative charge. Um, and you could see too, if you had four charges, really starts to get a little wild here. You can move things around and see like how it increases, changes around, etc. So that is electric field. I'm gonna come back to two like charges. And I wanna show you another sensor called the voltage sensor. So voltage is a property that is similar to electric field. Um, it's slightly different in the sense that it is looking at the amount of electric potential energy per charge, but it definitely has a relationship into how a charge will move if it's placed at a given point. It's how much electric potential the charge have if you put it there. So I want to show you how they're related to each other in that further away you get from the charge, the weaker the potential gets, the weaker the voltage gets, the closer you get to the charge, the 
the larger the voltage gets. Now notice voltage does not have an arrow. It's not a vector quantity, okay? Um, but it does have a relationship to how it causes charges to move. So that is electric field.